Would you like to have a listen to, to, to what Philip Hammond had to say last night to Andrew? This is now about the labour market. And the labour market in the UK is very tight. So uh, inflation is being driven by um, uh, rising wages. And there are two ways we can tackle this. You can either dampen down the economy as a whole by raising interest rates and, and reducing economic activity, slowing growth. Or you could try to soften the labour market, which of course in the days when we were in the single market would have happened automatically. More labour would have come in, attracted by higher wage rates here. That's not happened now. And I think the government has regarded any relaxation of migration rules as being politically toxic. But rising mortgage rates on the scale we're seeing is also politically toxic. Oh. So I think we might have to have a debate about the balance between the two. I mean, there it is. It's a really insightful point, or at least a really thought-provoking point, that the tension between two forms of political toxicity, the interest rate rises, which are, I, I mean, sending mortgages into the stratosphere for millions of people. We've been... All of us on LBC have been following that now for, for some time, possibly not quite as long as Martin Lewis, who, who was warning about this ticking time bomb, I think, as long ago as February. But the, the political toxicity of that, which is a very real... In many ways, this is, the, this is the essence of modern British politics, isn't it? Because what you have is a factual catastrophe, an evidential catastrophe, a catastrophe that affects people very immediately, obviously, and really, versus the mythical catastrophe of immigration, the, 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 the people in Nigel Farage's posters, the, the ones in the Daily Mail comment section, not the ones you know or work with or your children um, go to school with, the other ones, you know, the awful ones that are nicking all the jobs while also living on benefits and, and staying unemployed, those dreadful immigrants of Daily Mail editors' imaginings. That's a non-existent catastrophe. It, crikey, I had, you know, I, I knew I was going to talk about that this morning, but I hadn't spotted the absolute perfection of this paradigm for, for modern British politics or political media relations. On the one hand, a real fact-based catastrophe, which is politically toxic. On another, a completely mythologized, uh, evidence-free catastrophe, propaganda-based catastrophe, which is also politically toxic. Gosh. So, I mean... The obvious question to ask is, is, is Philip Hammond correct? Is, is it the case that um, the labour market is stagnant? Is the labour market is responsible in large part for the broader economic situation? Because wages go up, uh, inflation goes up. There's a sort of, uh, there's a natural poetry to the idea of, uh, a, a space being filled up by available contents, in this case, labour, but it can't be filled up. So it's an unsustainable bubble, if you like, that sees job vacancies not be filled. Therefore, wages rise higher and higher. You're never going to fill the wages. You're just competing with each other for a workforce that is too small. That's perhaps the best way to think about it. Employers are competing with each other for a workforce that is not big enough to satisfy all of their needs. On the other hand, objectively, and, and by squinting a little bit and not looking at the whole picture, rising wages are a good idea. It's not that long ago the Bank of England were calling for us to stop asking for pay rises, weren't they? A, a slightly infelicitous phraseology, which saw them get attacked for the fact that they earn quite good money themselves. So that seems to have gone a little bit south. Uh, Brexit, obviously, the biggest elephant in the room all the time on, on these matters. Hammond, uh, perfectly able to mention it because he is not um, uh, tethered to either the Tory party leadership or the Labour party leadership. So he's allowed to, to call a spade a spade. He's allowed to point at something and describe it accurately for reasons I don't fully understand. Keir Starmer's lot are still declining to do that. And for reasons I fully understand, Rishi Sunak's lot can't. So the Labour shortage would be fixed by freedom of movement or more immigration. They can't call it freedom of movement, obviously, not yet. We suggested some time ago that they would bring in something called liberty of motion. In fact, we said it was absolutely inevitable that liberty of motion would be introduced. And, and how exactly it would look, we, we weren't sure, but it would generally involve there being so many sectors where special exemptions were offered up for foreign workers that there might as well not be any sectors at all because 
there were so many of them. Do, do, do you see what I mean? So you start with agriculture, then you move into hospitality, possibly finance. You're looking at, um, uh, you know, retail, whatever it is. Eventually, there won't be any sectors left that haven't got special exemptions for foreign workers. But we can't admit that there aren't any areas where there are no special exemptions for foreign workers because that would be freedom of movement with one crucial difference. All right. Hands up. What would be the crucial difference between the sort of liberty of motion that Philip Hammond is talking about introducing and the sort of freedom of movement that Pretty Patel told you you should celebrate the abolition of just a couple of short, actually that's not true, a couple of very long, long, long years ago? What's the, what's the big difference between Hammond-style liberty of motion, which is a good thing, and Patel-style freedom of movement, which you should celebrate the abolition of? Anybody? Anybody? Bueller? <laughs> yeah, we wouldn't have the liberty of motion, you and me and our kids. Well, I might actually, thanks to the apostrophe in my name. But but most of us wouldn't have liberty of motion. We wouldn't have Hammond's liberty of motion. That would just be for foreign workers coming here. They'd be they'd be at liberty to motion in this direction. We would not be at liberty to motion outwards to to go to France to work, for example, or, or Germany, as many people did, of course, during the 1980s recession, particularly in the construction trade. That, that That's fascinating, right? I, you know, mostly I tell you that there's no pleasure whatsoever in being proved right. And I tell you it so often that it's probably just as annoying as me saying I told you so. So I, I will be mindful of that. But on this one, I don't know why I am deriving a modicum of satisfaction from it, because I think at the time that we did it on this program, nobody else was saying it. I genuinely think that we talked about the inevitability of having to either reverse or rebrand freedom of movement and, 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 and the absolutely inalienable fact that it would involve people being freer to come here while we remained completely confined to these islands. That's what they wanted you to celebrate. That's what Priti Patel wanted you to celebrate. She wanted you to celebrate the abolition of your own freedom of movement, brackets, because it means foreigners won't be able to come here, close brackets. Well, our current immigration rates are the highest that they've ever been. That is uh, worth mentioning. It may not stay that way forever. But the former Chancellor of the Exchequer, Philip Hammond, who not long ago, of course, was being lionised by all of the Brexit-supporting newspapers as him and Theresa May tried to at least mitigate some of the damage that was destined to be done to the country. The, the former Chancellor of the Exchequer, Philip Hammond, is pretty unequivocally stating that the UK's labour shortage means we need to open up our migration channels. Um, and he, he went further, actually, a closer relationship with the EU, particularly for services that will be deeply problematic for many of my colleagues. I don't want to go too deep. I don't want to go down necessarily the services route or the planning systems route. I want to focus pretty much exclusively on the relationship between the workforce and immigration. Liberty of inward motion. That's a rather nice phrase. You should have signed that text. I would have given you a shout out. I will give a shout out to Nick in Fairham, who was one of the first to shout. It's one way, James. It's one way. Just just pause and think about that for a minute. What, what are you going to do? I'm voting, voting for Brexit to control our borders. There's too many of them coming here. Too many of them coming here. Okay, how's that working out for you? Brilliant. There's more of them coming here than ever. And somehow, for reasons I don't fully understand, they're the wrong people coming because they're not filling the jobs that need to be filled in order to put some sort of pressure on our economy and, and bring down inflation. It's quite incredible.